Welcome to Inu tutorial. In this lesson, we are going to analyze a truss using method of joints. So this is going to be the second example. Now, if you take a look at the screen, we have a truss. So we have a pin support at point A, and we have a roller support at point A. So meaning at point A, we are going to have two unknown forces, and at point A, we are going to have one unknown force. So what do you know about the truss? Like, what can you say about this truss? This is basically a symmetry truss because if you look at this we are having the geometry to be symmetry and we're also having the external force to be symmetry because if you take a look at this we're having five keep at joint b and we're also having five keep at joint d so as you can see they are similar and we're having five keep at joint c so the arrangement of this truss is symmetry so because it is symmetry meaning whenever we calculate the force on the left side it is just going to be the same on the right side. So it's just going to be a mirror to the other side. So you need to take note of this. This is a symmetry truss. Now, using the method of joint, we need to pick a joint we are going to analyze. So, and how can we pick a joint? We need to pick a joint that has at most two unknown members framed into that joint. So if we have more than two members framed into a joint, we don't need to consider that joint because it is going to make the calculation very, very difficult. So you need to pick a joint that has at most two unknown forces, okay? So the first thing you need to do is, you need to first of all calculate the support reactions because we don't know the support reactions. So you need to calculate this, okay? So now, without, without uh, calculating the horizontal force, you can easily say AS is equal to zero because we don't have any horizontal force on this truss. So we are going to say AS is automatically equal to zero so we need to calculate a y and e y so now i'm going to calculate e y by taking summation of moment at point a so that i can calculate e y so i'm going to say i'm going to say summation of moment at point a is equal to zero so this is summation of moment at point a is equal to zero and i'm going to say the movement in the counterclockwise direction is positive while the movement in the clockwise direction is negative so e y because we know that moment is force times distance, so we need, we need force and distance for a moment to be produced. Okay, now this is going to be EY, which is the force, then multiply by the distance. Now, if we apply EY at joint E, which relative to A, it's going to try to rotate the truss in the counterclockwise direction, so it's going to be positive. So make sure you take note of that. So this is EY, then multiply by the distance. The distance is going to be 30 feet, as you can see, 15 plus 15, which is 30 feet. So this is 30 feet. Then we have 5 keep. So if we apply 5 keep at joint D with relative to A, it's going to try to rotate this in a clockwise direction. So meaning our value is going to be negative. Okay, so the counterclockwise direction is positive, while the clockwise direction is negative. So this is going to be negative 5 keep. Then multiply by the distance. So the distance is going to be half of 15 keep, half of 15 feet, which is 7.5 feet, then plus 15 feet, which is going to give us 22.5 feet. So this is multiplied by 22.5 feet. Then what about 5 keep? We also have another 5 keep of adjoint C. So it's going to try to rotate the truss in the clockwise direction. So the distance is 15 keep, as you can see. So this is 5 keep, then multiply by 15 feet then lastly we have five keep it's going to try to rotate this truss in the clockwise direction and the distance is half of 15 feet which is going to be 7.5 feet so this is minus five keep then multiply by 7.5 feet so we don't have any additional force so this is equal to zero so now you just need to calculate for ey using your calculator it is very very easy now i don't want to go for that because it is going to take a lot of time so ey is going to be equal to 7.5 keep so using your calculator you can easily get that value okay and as you can see we're having a positive value this support reactions we assume the direction to be upward this was just an assumed value but because we're having a positive value meaning our assumption is indeed correct but if we have a negative value our assumption is wrong it is acting in the opposite direction so now we know EY, we can calculate for, well, first of all, let me write this, so let me draw this, this is upward. So we can calculate for EY by taking the summation of all the forces in the Y direction is equal to zero. 
So I'm going to say all, all the forces acting upward is positive, while all the forces acting downward is negative. So as you can see, EY is 7.5 kip, so it is positive. So this is 7.5 kip. Then we're having 5 kip, 5 kip, 5 kip. They are all acting downward, so this is going to be negative. 5 kip, negative 5 kip, and negative 5 kip. Then we're having AY, which is which is the value we want to calculate. So this is positive AY because we assume it to be acting upward. So this is going to be equal to zero. So now you can easily calculate for AY. So if you calculate for AY, you're going to get AY is also equal to 7.5 kip. Okay, so you can do this using your calculator. It's very easy. So because we're having a positive value, meaning our assumption is right, this is indeed acting upward. Now we know the support reactions. We know AS is equal to zero. We know EY and AY, they are all equal to 7.5. Now, we now, use, we now need to use the method of joint to calculate the members. Okay, so we want to calculate the members on these joints. So the first thing you need to do is you need to, first of all, calculate this angle. You need to calculate this angle. And how can we calculate this angle? We are going to use what we know as so katua. So, and using so katua, if we want to calculate this angle, meaning this side is going to be the opposite, why this side is going to be the adjacent, okay? So meaning this is opposite of adjacent, which is tangent, okay? So this is going to be tangent. So this is going to be tangent theta. So this is tangent theta is equal to 10 over 15. So if we take the tangent inverse, so this is going to be theta is equal to tangent inverse of 10 over 15. So if you calculate this, we are going to get the value of theta as 33 points. So this is going to be 33.690. So this is 33.690 degree. So now we know theta. So the question is, which joint do you want to choose? Which joint do you want to start with? Like I said, you need to start with a joint that has at most two members framed into the joint. Now, I'm going to take a look at joint A. Because, as you can see, we're having two members framing into joint A. So, let me start with joint A. So, I'm going to say joint A. So, this is the first joint we're going to take a look at. So, this is joint A. So, now let me draw the joint. So, we're having A. So, this is the joint. Then, we're having a force A wire, which is 7.5 kip, acting upward. So, this is 7.5 kip. Then, we're having a member AB, like this. So this is AB. Then we're having another member AF like this. So this is AF. Now, this is what you need to do. When in that, always assume your that, that, that is always assume your forces to be in tension. Okay, so always assume all the forces to be in tension. And if you have a positive value, your assumption is right. If you have a negative value, your assumption is wrong. They are acting in the opposite direction. So we are going to say AB is in tension, so it is moving away from the joint. So when it is in tension, when it is in tension, it is moving away from the joint. And when it is in compression, it is moving into the joint. Okay? So now, as you can see, we are having AB, that is this inclined member. We are, we are, we are, we are having it at joint um, A. So what you need to do is you need to decompose this into its vertical and horizontal components. So whenever you have an inclined member, you need to decompose it into its vertical and horizontal components. So this is going to be something like this. So this is going to be the horizontal components. Why this is going to be the vertical components? Oh, hope you can see this clearly. Yeah. So this is A, B, S. Why this is A, B, Y. Now, because we know that this angle is 33.690 degree. So now we need to calculate AB and AF. So this is what we need to calculate now. So what, what, what we're going to do is we're going to take summation of all the forces in the vertical direction equal to zero. So this is the first thing we need to do. So this is go we're going to say summation of all the vertical forces is equal to zero. And we're going to say the, all the force acting upward is positive, while all the force acting downward is negative. So as you can see, we're having 7.5 kip. This is acting upward, so this is going to be positive. So this is 7.5 kip. Then now, this is where you need to pay close attention. Now, 
whenever we decompose the force, what we're going to say is the vertical component is associated with sine, while the horizontal component is associated with cosine. So make sure you take note of this. So meaning this is going to be this is going to be the vertical component then multiplied by the sine of the angle. So as you can see, AB is acting upward. So this is going to be positive because it is acting upward. So this is positive. So it's going to be AB then multiplied by sine of the angle. So this is going to be sine of 33.690 degree because this is the vertical component. So it is associated with sine. Okay, so we don't have any additional vertical force, so this is equal to zero. So all you need to do, you just need to calculate AB. It is very, very easy. Use your calculator to calculate this. So if you use your calculator, you're going to get AB is AB is equal to negative 13.512 kip. Now, what can you say concerning this? Because we're having a negative value, meaning our assumption is wrong. This is in compression. So whenever you have the value to be to be negative, it is in compression. And whenever you have the value to be to be in positive, it is in tension. So, so um, AB was negative negative thirteen point five one two kip, and this is in compression because we're having a negative value. So now we need to calculate for AF. So we need to calculate for AF. So we're going to say summation of all the horizontal force is equal to zero. So horizontal force is equal to zero. I'm going to say all the forces acting to the right is positive, while all the forces acting to the left is negative. So as you can see, AF is acting to the right. So this is positive. So this is AF. Then now we're having ABS. So ABS, as you can see, is acting to the right, as you can see. So this is going to be positive. So this is positive. So because the ABS is associated with cosine. So meaning this is going to be AB. So this is AB. Then multiply by cosine of the angle, which is cosine of 33 point, the angle, which is 33.690 degree. So we don't have any additional horizontal force. So this is equal to zero. So all you need to do, you just need to calculate for AF. And we know that AB is, AB is 13. AB is negative 13.512 kip. So this is going to be AF then minus 13.512 kip then multiply by cosine of 33.690 degree. So if you calculate for AF, you are going to get AF. AF is equal to 11.250 kip. So AF is going to be 11.250 kip. Now, as you can see, this is a positive value. So because it is a positive value, meaning this is going to be in tension because it is a positive value. So AF is 11.25 kip, and this is in tension. So I'm going to write this here. So I'm going to abbreviate it using T. So this is in tension. So now... We need to redraw the joints because now we change some value. So we need to redraw the joints. So this is the joint. Then we're having 7.5 kip. So we're having this member. Then we're also having this member. So we said this member is AB, right? This member is AB. This member is AF. So AB was 13. 0.512 keep and it is in compression. So this is going to be in compression. So this is moving into the joint. So AB is equal to 13.512 keep. Then we have AF. AF is 11.250 keep and it is in tension. So it is moving away from the joint. So it is going to be like this. So AF is equal to 11.250 keep. So now we need to write this on the truss. So we need to write this on the truss. So this is going to be, so let me use a green marker. So AB is 13.512 and this is in compression. Then we are having AF. AF is 11.250 and this is in tension. 
So like I said, this truss is symmetry. So meaning whatever we have on the left is also going to be the same value on the right. So make sure you take note of that. So meaning Fe is basically 11.250 and this is also in tension. Why DE is going to be 13.512 and this is in compression. So let's move to the next joint. So now we are going to move to joint B. So we are going to move to this joint. So let's say this is joint B. So this is the next joint we are going to analyze. So this is the joint B. And we are having this member. We are also having this member. Then we are also having this member. So this member is this member. That is this. This is AB. And what what um, did we say concerning AB? We said AB is 13.512 kip and it, it is in compression. So meaning this is going to be in compression. So meaning this is moving into the joint. So it's going to be like this. So the direction is going to be like, like this. Okay. So an AB is what? 13.512 kip. So this is AB is equals to 13.512 kip. So this member is BC, while this member is BF. So this is BF. So like I said, when it that, you should always assume the member to be moving away from the joint. So you should always assume them to be in tension. Okay, so this is moving away from the joint, and this is also moving away from the joint. So now we are going to analyze this. So let me use a red marker for this. So this is joint B. So now, like I said, when we have a diagonal member, we need to decompose this into its horizontal and vertical components. So for BC, it is going to be like this. So the, we are going to have the component like this. So this is BCS and this is BCY. So for BF, we are going to have it like this. So it's going to look something like this. So this is B F Y and this is B F S. Okay. So like I said, the horizontal component is associated with cosine, while the vertical component is associated with sine. So make sure you take note of that. So now we need to calculate this. We are going to say summation of all the vertical force is equal to zero. So this is what we are going to take. So we are going to say the summation of all the vertical force is equal to zero. So this is. So first of all, let me this so, so that we don't make any mistake like this yeah so we're going to say summation of all the vertical force is equals to zero and i'm going to say all the force acting upward is positive while the force acting downward is negative so now before i forget we also have five keep on this joint so that five keep here so now as you can see five keep is acting downward so this is going to be negative because it is acting downward so this is negative 5 keep. Then now, what about because we are taking a look at the vertical forces? So, this is going to be for, for AB. If we decompose AB, AB will look something like this. So, this is AB. So, this is ABS and this is ABY. So, the vertical force is going to be positive because, as you can see, it is moving upward. So this is going to be plus. So we know that AB is 13.512 keep, right? So this is 13.512 keep. Then multiply by sine of the angle because we are taking a look at the vertical component. So this is sine of 33.690 degree. Then the next vertical force we are, we are, we are going to take a look at is BC. So it's, it's going to be BCY, as you can see, this is BCY. So because it is moving upward, it is positive. So this is positive. BC, then multiply by sine of the angle, because we are taking a look at the vertical component. So this is sine of 33.690 degree. Then the last one is BF. So as you can see, BFY is moving downward, so it's going to be negative. So this is negative BF. They multiply by sine of the angle. So this is sine of 33.690 degree. 
So we don't have any additional force, so this is equal to zero. So this is going to be negative 5 kip. This is negative 5 kip, then plus 13.512 multiplied sine of 33.690 is going to give us positive 7.495. Then if you calculate this, BC multiplied sine 33.690 is going to give us positive 0 0.555 BC. Then this is going to be negative 0 0.555 BF is equal to 0. So if we, if we add up this negative 5 keep plus 7.495 keep, this is also in keep. If you add this up, you are going to get 2.495. So if you move this to the right side, it is going to be 0 0.55 BC minus 0 0.55 BF is equal to negative, negative 2.495. So if we divide both sides by 0 0.55, because we want to make BC and BF stand alone, we are going to have BC minus BF is equal to negative 4.5. So this is going to be equation 1, because as you can see, we are having two unknown. We are having BC and BF. So we need to calculate for BC and BF. But because we don't know this, so we are, we are going to say this is equation 1. So we need to take a look at another equation okay so we need to find another equation now the next step we're going to take is we're going to take summation of all the forces in the horizontal component is equal to zero so now we're going to get the second equation so it's like this so all the force added to the right is positive while the force added to the left is negative so basically it is just going to be the same but this time around it's going to be for the horizontal component so doing this for a b we're going to have 13. 5, 1, 2, then multiply. So it's going to be cosine because we are dealing with horizontal components. So this is cosine of 33.690 degree. Then for BC, for BC, it's going to be positive because as you can see, BCS is moving to the right, so it is going to be positive. So this is going to be, so this is going to be negative, sorry, not negative, positive. This is positive. BC then multiply by cosine of 33.690 degree. So the last one is also going to be positive. As you can see, BFS is moving to the right, so it's going to be positive. So this is going to be positive. BF, then multiply by cosine of 33.690 degree. So it's equal to zero. So if we calculate this, now you can easily calculate this. So we are going to have BC and BF as the unknown. So if we do this, we are going to have this equation. We are going to have the equation like this. BC plus BF is equal to negative 13.5 keep. So this is the equation you are going to get. So it is very, very easy to get this equation. All you need to do is just need to calculate this. So this is going to be the second equation. So this is equation Two. So now we are going to use these two equations to calculate BC and BF. So now we have the first equation, BC minus BF is equal to negative 4.5. And the second equation is BC plus BF is equal to negative 13.5, right? So this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. So now what we are going to do is that we need to solve for equation 1. So we need to solve for BC. So BC, if we solve for BC in equation 1, BC is going to be equal to negative 4.5 then plus BF. So basically, I took negative BF to the right side of the equation. Okay, so this is BC is equal to negative 4.5 plus BF. And we can say BC is equal to BF minus 4.5. So they are same. So now we're going to plug this into equation 2. So whenever we see BC, we're going to plug BF minus 4.5. So this is going to be BF minus 4.5, which is replacing BC, then plus BF is equal to negative 13.5. As you can see, BF plus BF is going to give us 2BF. So now we now have 2BF, 2BF. Then this negative 4.5 is going to move to the right side of the equation. So it's going to be negative 13.5, then plus 4.5, which is going to give us negative 9.0. So this is 2BF is equal to negative 9.0. So for this, we're going to get BF 
is equal to negative 9.0 is going to divide 2. So doing this, we are going to get negative 4.5 keep. So this is BF is equal to negative 4.5 keep. Now, what can you say concerning this? We're having BF equals to negative 4.5 keep. So because it is negative, meaning this is in compression. Okay, so this is going to be in compression. So this is BF. So now we need to calculate for BC. So because we know BF, so we can easily plug BF into any of this equation. Let's plug in BF into this equation. As you can see, let's plug into this equation that we can calculate for BC. So doing this, we are going to have BC is equal to BF, which is negative 4.5, then minus 4.5. So, negative 4.5 minus 4.5 is basically negative 9.0. So, BC, so BC is equal to negative 9.0 keep. So, this is BC. So, this is the value of BC, negative 9.0 keep. Now, what can you say concerning this? As you can see, we also have a negative value. So, meaning this is in compression because we're having a negative value. So, now, what I'm going to do is you need to redraw the 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 joint so the joint is joint c so we're having this member we're having this member we're also having this member and we're having a force of five keep on the joints so this is five keep so we know that a b is 13.512 keep and this is in compression okay it was negative 13.512 keep and this is in compression so this is going to be a b is equal to 13.512 keep so meaning this is moving into the joint okay so this is moving into the joint so it's like this moving into the joint so bc is negative 9.0 keep and it is in compression so meaning this is moving into the joint so it's like this so meaning this is bc is equals to 9.0 keep then we have BF, which is negative 4.5 keep, and it is a compression, so it is moving into the joint. So we have something like this. So this is BF is equal to 4.5 keep. So now, what you can do, you need to write this on the truss. So we're having BC is 9.0 keep. It is in compression, so this 9.0, and it is in compression. Then BF is 4.5. So BF is 4.5 and it is in tension. So like I said, whatever you have on the left is also going to be the same on the right. So on the on the left, we are going to have... So let me write this using blue. So this is 4.5 in tension. And this is going to be 9.0 in compression. Okay, so we are good to go. So now we are going to take a look at the last joint which is joint c so now we need to calculate the last joint so which is joint c so now the only member that is left is cf so we need to calculate cf so we are going to say joint c so which is the next joint so this is joint c so we're having this we're having a joint then we're having five keep then we're having this member, we're having this member, and we're having this member. So this is CF. This is what, one, this is what we want to calculate. And we have BC is in compression. So it is moving into the joint. Let me use a red marker. And we have, um, we have B. We have a CD. And CD is in compression. So it is moving into the joint. So it is like this. So this is CD is equal to... CD is what CD is is, uh, is equal to 9.0 keep. So this is 9.0 keep, and BC BC is equal to 9.0 keep. So what we are left with just CF. So we need to calculate for CF. So like I said, whenever we have an inclined member, we need to decompose it into its horizontal and vertical components. So for BC, we are going to have something like this. So this is BCS. So this is BCS. Then for the vertical component, it's going to look something like this. So this is B, C, Y. So for C, D, it's going to look something like this. So this is C, D, S. Then for the vertical component, it's going to look something like this. So this is C, D, Y. 
So we want to calculate or we want to find CF. Like I said, when it does, always assume it to be moving away from the joint. So it is always assumed to be in tension. Okay. If we have a positive value, it is in tension. If we have a negative value, it is in compression. So CF is going to be moving away from the joint. So now we are going to say summation of all the vertical force is equal to zero so that we can find CF. So I'm going to say summation of all the vertical force is equal to zero and all the forces acting upward is positive while the forces acting downward is negative. So as you can see, five keep is acting downward. So this is automatically going to be equal to negative. So this is negative five keep. Then, so for the vertical component, that, that is for BCY, it is going to be positive because as you can see, it is acting upward. So it's going to be positive. So this is going to be positive. So because we are taking a look at the vertical component, it is going to be BC then multiplied by sine of the angle. So it's going to be BC multiplied by sine of 33.690 degree. So for CDY, as you can see, it is also acting upward. So it is going to be positive as well. So it's going to be plus CD then multiplied by sine of 33.690 because we are taking a look at the vertical component and lastly we have cf as you can see cf is acting downward so means it's going to be negative so this is negative cf so we don't have any additional force so this is equal to zero so basically this is going to be negative 5 keep then plus so sine 33 plus 690 is basically going to give us 0 0.555 and we know bc we know that bc is 9.0 keep and cd is also 9.0 keep so if we evaluate this we are going to get this as 4.995 then plus 4.9 4 4.995 then minus cf is equal to zero so now we are going to calculate for cf so it is very very easy now for you to calculate for cf so if you calculate for cf you are going to get cf is equal to 5.0 keep so like I said, the value of CF is going to be equal to 5.0 keep. So as you can see, CF is equal to 5.0 keep. Now, CF is a positive value. What can we say concerning this? Because it is a positive value, meaning this is in tension. So CF is 5.0 keep and it is in tension. Okay, so now you are going to draw it on the truss. So I'm going to use a red pen to indicate this. So this is 5.0 and it is in tension. So now these are all the member forces on the truss. So you can see, so we are finally done with this truss. So as you can see, these are all the member forces on the truss. So this truss is a symmetric truss. So the value we, we got on the left was also the same value on the right because it is a symmetry truss. So this is how you can use method of joint to analyze a truss or this is how you can use method of joint to find the member forces on a truss. So this is the end of this lesson. This lesson was a bit long because the geometry of this truss is a little bit complicated. So this was the reason the lesson was a bit long. but. I hope you got the idea. I hope you understand everything I explained so far. But if you don't understand or maybe there is any part uh, you don't understand, feel free to ask me any question in the comment section below and I will try to answer all your questions. And if this is the first time you are watching any of my video or maybe you have been watching my video for a long time but you've not subscribed, please kindly subscribe to this channel because this is what is going to help me to make more content like this in the future. So. To subscribe to the channel just click the red subscribe button under the video that says subscribe if you click that you'll be on your way and it's the bell notification icon so that whenever i upload a new video you'll be the first to get notification and if you enjoyed this lesson so far please just click the like button it is going to be helpful for, uh, to me please i beg you please click the like button please be cool <laughs> and also if you want to share this video with your friend you can share this video with your friends so that they can also learn from it and what else what else what else what else i think that is the end so i'm going to see you all or you all are going to see me in my next video 
，拜拜。